Hello, my name is Rainer Hanekamp. I'm a trainer and consultant at Angular Architects. And in this video, I want to show you Angular in version 14.2. Now, 14.2 is a minor release, which means it's fully backwards compatible to the major 14, obviously. It only comes with new features and also some bug fixes. We can say we have two groups of new features. The first group is, I would say, the continuation of the migration to the standalone API, which means that Angular migrates also the functionality of Angular itself, of the framework itself, also to standalone. This time it was the router module and Angular elements. And the second group is actually just a single directive under the name ng optimized image. This is a very powerful directive because it applies a set of best practices on the way how we can deal with images in our application. Let's start with that directive first. Alright, so we have here our application. It's a very simple one. It only contains a list of images, actually a list of quite large images. Uh, we have here 11 in uh, total images of different cities. Now at the moment I'm not using this new directive so if we take a look at the implementation, we see it's just a normal image tag which uses the source attribute. Nothing fancy. Now in order to activate this ng-optimized image, I need to replace the source attribute with raw source, like this. And of course I need to import the standalone um, directive in this case. If you are using ng-modules, then you will have to place the import for ng-optimized image in your Angular module, obviously. Now what happens now is that ng-optimized image starts to do run a quite a lot of checks against your attack here. Actually, it's not, not that many, it's just there are just two main checks it does and which are relevant for us. The first one is that it checks if I've really set the width and the height. If I've missed that, as I did, then I'm getting an error message because now I have this problem that content, shift, content shifting takes place, which means when the images are loaded later on and the page is already partially rendered, then the content might start to, to shift around. And this is, of course, a very bad practice. We should avoid this. And that's the reason why we should come up with the width and the, head and the height. And this is what I'm going to do now. So actually, these are full HD images, very large one. Maybe one can optimize them, but for now, I just use them with their original values. Okay, so I've just set the dimensions. Let's go back, let's reload. And now um, we see something, but we also see now a warning. What happened right now is that Angular um, added some attributes to, to these images. So it said, there should be a lazy loading happening and fetch priority should be set to automatic, which kind of means no priority at all, or the browser should just decide it. Now with lazy loading, this means that we tell the browser, this is an image uh, you don't need to load in the beginning, it's up to you. And when we actually take a look at the network, we see that this is already working because the Network tells us we have 11 images in total, but it only started to load the first three ones. And if I start to scroll down, then the browser starts to load the other, the other ones um, unless we reach the end. So this is already a very cool benefit, a very cool advantage that where we don't have to do actually anything. But that's not all of it. It's not just about making sure that we are not running into this problem of content shifting, uh, that we have lazy loading enabled by default. We also have this other check here in place where the directive tells us, look, it looks like you use an image, uh, this one, Darmstadt, this is the last one. And I saw that this image has a width of 4,000. Now this is way beyond, um, even if you have a high density screen, it can't become larger than two times. So that's why it accepted the full HD images where we had the width of 1920, but 4000 is far too much. Um, it's not an error, but it is a warning in this case. 
So I can now say, okay, I'm optimizing this image or I just um, remove it, what I will do. So I go to my data and I say, okay, this image or this city here does not exist in my application. Now it loads and I can scroll down and we see that this warning goes away. But we have another one. Let me quickly reload again. Now the thing is, although the images are lazily loaded, there are some, Im some images where we know they shouldn't be lazy loaded and these are the ones that are in the viewport when the page is loaded. And in the development mode, the new directive is also checking that there are that all images that are within the viewport that we have prioritized them. So it's up to us to tell to the browser, look, this is an, an, an image that I see as very critical, most cases because it is part of the viewport and this is why you should prioritize it. Angular sees this, that the Vienna image has not been prioritized and that's why we're getting here a warning. So in order to get rid of this warning, everything I have to do is that I say, okay, if this is the first one, so first um, as is first, then I say, okay, I have this priority, priority attribute, and depending if this is the first image or not from my list, then I'm returning priority. This is actually the value itself, so it has the same value is the same as the key and if not then I just say it should be false. Now if I go back to my application it starts to reload then we will see that this warning has gone. We also see that this image has now the uh, priority attribute set uh, to, to high in this case and uh, we also see that loading this time is eager. With London, we still have a loading is lazy. Okay, so now the browser is aware, oh, this image is really important and I need to uh, do everything which is required uh, to prioritize that one. This was it more or less already. There is one last thing that also comes with this directive and this is support for CDNs, for special CDNs, so content delivery network networks that can provide optimized images. Now I have already provided, a, come up with a, with a component which does this and here you see how it looks like. And then the directive will automatically, automatically load the images from uh, this cloud provider here. So if I copy and paste this like this, uh, then more or less if we go back and reload the page, we should already see that the images are now loaded from a different part. In this case it's not true because I've missed or I used the wrong path. So I think it should be angular 14.2. Let's me try again. Yeah, and now the images are there. And I mean that's not all of it. There is again a check if everything is all right, if, if everything follows best practices. Um, Ingela is telling us here, hey look, you're obviously loading images not from your applications domain, but from another one. You've missed to add the pre-connect tag to your head in your HTML. Maybe you want to do this, of course, also in order to improve the loading process. So I can see here, okay, um, I have already here the command. I just copy that one, paste it into the index HTML right here. Oops, this is something else. This looks like a stack trace. Yep. Uh, copy. Just copy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I should do it. And um, well, now the error warning goes away. And again, we have an optimized usage of a CDN provider. Okay, and I have already provided an, an, an extended version of our example. So I have here um, our application where I have the unoptimized version, the optimized version and the optimized version that comes with the CDN. And what I, what I can do, what you can also do, I mean, it's publicly available. The link will be in the description. You can run the Lighthouse or some other 
audit or performance tool against it and you will see that there is really a difference uh, in terms of performance. I'm going to do this right now. So we see this is the one, this is the unoptimized version more or less, uh, performance of 40%. It's, what else do we see here? So large, largest content full paint, which is obviously the first image, 7.6 seconds. There was also a cumulative layout shift. This was because we didn't use the width and the height. And if we go to the optimized version where we only apply uh, the directive, uh, then we see the performance improved. It's still not green. I mean, it's not 100%, but it is better. And uh, we saw and see also the largest contentful paint was really reduced because it's now a critical image. And also the cumulative layout shift is also almost zero. Now you see uh, you're getting some advantages, performance gains, obviously, but I mean, it's not something where I would say you just turn it on and it just works out of the box and you have 100% in terms of image loading performance. This is not going to happen, but at least it is a start. You have some, some, some very good checks against it. And if you really want to improve the performance, then of course you have to invest your own time and have to optimize manu manually as well. But so far it looks quite good and we will also see that in the upcoming versions of Angular that this um, directive will get more and more features. Now about the second part, which is the standalone API or to be precise, the extension of the standalone API. I've mentioned it already in the beginning. Uh, since the version 14, we are able to come up with our own standalone components where we don't need an Angular module anymore. So I've, if you're interested in that, there is a, a separate video about Angular, about the major of Angular 14 itself. But this only means our application code could already run without any ng modules. But this doesn't mean that this also is true for the libraries or for the Angular framework itself, because they also need to migrate their code base to stand alone first. And in the case of the Angular framework, it's partially done. They are, they are extending the migration or they continue to do the migration via different minor versions or maybe even also uh, with the next major version. I don't know. But at the moment with Angular 14.2, they have migrated the router module to a standalone alternative. And the same is true to the Angular elements as well that will give us a possibility to um, expose a particular component as a web component. But the more important thing I think is about the router module itself. So if we take a look at our application, it's already standalone. So this means we don't have an app module anymore, but the application or the bootstrapping of the application is done via the main TS. And there we see the bootstrap application function. Again, if you want to know more about this, there is another video. And this is the, we see the import providers from, and this is exactly what I meant. This is a function, a backwards compatible, compatibility function, more or less, for all the dependencies that are still not running on standalone. And we see here the router module, the client module, the browser animations module. Now, from beginning from version 14.2, you can remove the router module. You don't need it anymore in order to configure your routing. Uh, everything you need to do now is that you just run the function provide router. That is the, 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 this is actually what replaces this and comes from the standalone API. And you just say, okay, these are the routes I want to have and you're more or less done. Not completely, but um, the major part is already done. And uh, let's quickly check. So I can still click through the links. I don't see any errors so far, so good. I've cheated a little bit. I mean, there are some errors. And the reason is that uh, the links are coming from the side menu. And here we see the router link directive. Now the router link directive obviously comes from the router module itself. Now we didn't import or we removed the router module from our root scope more or less. And that's why we have a problem right now. 
I cheated a little bit in this case because the signed menu bar also has the router module imported. So if I'm going to remove that one as well, then we will see that our function or our application doesn't work anymore. So I can click on the buttons, but I see that the, but, but we see that the navigation doesn't happen because in the end, um, if I click on the link, uh, we see, well, the router link is set. There is an attribute router link, but since the directive is not activated, it will not produce the HRF tag that we actually need uh, for the browser to start the navigation. Now, in order to fix this, uh, we just need to import the router link directive um, as it is, because this also comes now as a standalone directive, so to say. In my case, um, IntelliJ helps me again, so I can say here, okay, I want to get some suggestions on how to fix this because IntelliJ says now, oh, there is a router link. I don't know where this should come from. You didn't import anything that provides this, but it says, look, I found something. There is this router link with HRF. Maybe this is what you need. Should I import it for you? Yes. And this is now the standalone directive that will make sure that the router module is not needed anymore. So if I go back, if I reload the page, then we will see that the links are again working. And that's it, more or less. So we have seen the two different groups of new features that we have. The ng-optimized image, which in my opinion is extremely powerful and is the star of this minor version. And then of course also the extension of the component API. So if you ask me, definitely make sure that you can upgrade as soon as possible. It's definitely worth it. And well, that's it more or less. Um, hope you have enjoyed it and see you in another video. Goodbye.